Hey everyone, Salmon here from windstrength.com bringing you a quick video on barbell maintenance. So I currently own a Rogue Ohio power bar that I've owned for about seven months and I've cleaned it once before and that's about it. Um, I live in Southern California, so humidity isn't the worst. I mean, we definitely have some. Uh, the, the barbell just stays inside, so there's no real outdoor uh, outdoor issues for that part. So I'm not taking it outside and leaving it outdoors. It mainly stays inside in a garage. Uh, the door stays closed for 90% of the time. Uh, really, the biggest factors regarding moisture on this will be sweat, and um, that's about it. And and the temperature stays pretty much under 100 hundred for the most part and I mean in the winter time it's not really an issue there's no real moisture here it doesn't rain that often so we're generally dealing with a pretty dry climate here so uh, rust and corrosion isn't that big of an issue um, you'll see in some of the shots I've, I've done a, a close-up of what the barbell looks like right now uh, it's really just affected by chalk over the last five months or so um, and there's no real no real other damage yet there's some there's a little bit of uh, I think discoloration where my shins come up and down on the barbell during deadlifts uh, but that's about it so it's pretty good condition I mean this isn't that necessary to be honest with you um, I just wanted to make this look good and thought I would show you guys how I clean my barbell really quickly and I only use three three items here so we're gonna have uh, three-in-one oil I got this off of Amazon really cheap uh, the only reason I got the big one is because it was cheaper per fluid ounce and you can kind of use it everywhere else around the house gears, I use it for the Concept 2 rower, uh, sharpening knives, greasing up rusty hinges. Uh, this thing goes a long way, so that's really good. And the other thing is a brush, a cheap nylon brush. I wouldn't recommend uh, any of the steel brushes, so brass or steel, because that, that has a potential to damage the finish. And I mean, I just wouldn't risk it, better for just getting a nylon brush. Um, I like the smaller ones, because it, it you get a little bit more force with the bristles uh, when you go and brush that through so that's the only reason I get this one over the smaller over the bigger brushes sorry and just finally a rag just to clean up um, I'll do it over the in the squat rack that allows me to just spin it around with minimal damage and makes it a lot easier it, it's at a height that I'm able to work on and I'll just wipe up the, the floor afterwards so that's about it so from here I'll show you how I go about cleaning it so step one I will just um, throw some oil so step one, I'll just like put some oil over the top there a little bit. It'll just drip and that's fine. I'll just hit onto the wooden platform um, and I'll just start brushing away. So we just finished one side of the handles. Um, you can really tell a huge difference between the two. Uh, a lot of chalk in here and a lot of, uh, it's just cleaned up and that took literally like under a minute. Uh, I don't think I scrubbed for that long. Uh, that's why I like to use a little bit of the oil before um, I start scrubbing. That way it just loosens up and binds to that dirt there and lets it come out. So I'll finish up with this side and we'll show you the results afterwards. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, the cleaning process took probably under 10 minutes. I mean, probably five minutes max. It took me longer to set up the videos to film the cleaning session actually. So it really doesn't take that much. And all of these pieces of equipment you can buy off of Amazon or Home Depot. Just look for three-in-one oil on Amazon. They usually have a special here and there and just getting some HDX branded cheap nylon brushes or whichever brush you want, want to use. Hell, even a used toothbrush could work in a pinch if you really want to save some cash there. But nevertheless, I also use a, a, uh, an old t-shirt that you don't mind throwing away because it's just going to get grimed up and the knurling is going to tear up that fabric. So just use some rags that you can throw away and you're gonna gonna be on your way. Uh, the reason, one of the reasons you want to worry about uh, maintaining the bubble is if you use chalk. Uh, the point of the chalk is to absorb moisture on your hands. So what's that going to do is it's going to absorb the moisture in the air if it's attached to the barbell. It's another reason why you actually don't want to chalk up the barbell. Um, just chalk your hands up or your back. Don't apply chalk directly to the barbell if you can help it. Uh, if anything, if there's too much chalk in the barbell, what it'll actually do is it'll gum up the knurling and you could you can effectively remove nullify the knurling by having too much chalk in the grooves because it removes that that ridge much like a a road tire works for di um, dispelling water during the rain so 
when you're on a bald tire there is no grip and if you put enough chalk into the grooves you'll have a smooth surface much like this part of the barbell um, so that's one reason to maintain some uh, cleanliness for the barbell um, other than that if you do live in a humid environment I would recommend it a bit more frequently than if you live in a dry environment just because there is more moisture in the air somewhere like Southern California um, a little inland so I'm not really close to the water uh, so that's really not big of an issue, but if you are in a humid climate, definitely do it a bit more than I do. Other than that, just if you do share the barber with other people, this is just gummed up with dead skin cells, so depending on how much you like those other people, clean the barber a little bit more frequently than I do. I'm generally the only person in here, so it's just my own dead skin cells, which is still kind of gross. Um, one thing to keep in mind is after you clean, because you have used grease, there will be some there will be some grease on the on the barbell itself just for a couple of days, a couple of sessions after you do it just because that's how the grease kind of works it is providing a nice protective coating there but generally you don't want grease on a barbell because it becomes more slippery so just be careful for the next couple of workouts just make sure you do have a nice solid purchase on the barbell uh, maybe don't try one rep max deadlifts but I mean you can if you want, just add to that challenge might as well just uh, grip the smooth part of the barbell uh, other than that, there you go, three three little, three pieces of equipment to clean the barbell up. Nothing more than that, it took under five minutes. I would maybe do it once every six months. You could probably do it, you'd probably get away with it once a year, do it with the spring cleaning. Uh, if you want to do it more than that, change once every season. If you have a lot of people using a gym, maybe once a week, once a month. But hey, what do I know? Uh, if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to catch some more videos like this. Uh, let me know if you want to see any more tips and tutorials uh, about what I can help you with, uh, whether that be equipment maintenance or programming or techniques. I'll try and produce a bit more constructive content rather than just talk about myself. Uh, otherwise, please check out the blog, winstrength.com. That is a training blog where I write up some weekly reviews of what I've done for the week, as well as I'm releasing a new stoic power series where I bring some stoic thoughts into powerlifting and motivation for the gym. So again, thank you for watching. This has been Selwyn from Win Strength, and remember, a better life through strength.